Consider what's going on out there in the minds of people about the banking business as we know that it's, it's in the hands of the wrong people. Right. Mm -hmm. It can be done at that you and me level totally. Which is where it should be held. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. But they don't think that. Now, how are you going to get this across in 30 minutes, in 40 hours, in 40 days? It won't be done. It's got to evolve a little bit at a time. And they've got to be receptive to it. They've got to get inspired. They've got to go through the period of introspection and get their head screwed on right. Let's talk about introspection a little bit more. Mm -hmm. All right. How important that is. Uh, remember that I'm a forester. And during those nine years of uh, work, uh, I spent lots of time in the woods by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never would have thought of that, actually. <laughs> now, I'm an airplane driver. I've got about 8,000 hours of flying time, about four each, military, four uh, civilian. Uh, of this military, at least one-fourth of that time was by myself in an airplane. Hmm. Have we ever discussed the, uh, what flying an airplane is like? Hours and hours of boredom punctuated by a few seconds of stark terror. Right. <laughs> you, you sit there and there's the world. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you get you the place to think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago today, I was in Brookwood Hospital over here getting replumbed mm -hmm. in the heart four times. Wow. Wow. 30 yeah. years ago today is the anniversary of that. I was recovering in the hospital at that time. That surgery was on Thursday. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Kim and Dave uh, were living in El Paso at that time. And we'd gone out to uh, do Christmas with them. Got home on uh, Tuesday after Christmas and uh, New Year's. I've been involved in singing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, sure. All right. I was taking voice lessons at that time on Wednesday night. Went home bellowing at the top of my voice. Mary says, sound like you feel good. I do. Yeah. Had uh, a bite to eat. Got to go to choir practice. Abbreviated choir practice. Ice storm was coming. Mm. Uh, People around you don't know how to drive on ice, <laughs> coupled with the fact that it's hilly, you know. All right. So um, I got home early. I, uh, Mary was cooking in case the uh, power was out, which did happen. Mm -hmm. I sat there and talked to her for about 30 minutes or so and said, you know, I think I'll turn in. Went to bed about two o'clock in the morning. I woke up with a rumbling in here. Hmm. Hmm. There was no uh, chest pain. There was no pain shooting down my arm that people talk about, stuff like that. Well, there was nausea. Hmm. Yeah. You ever picked up a sack with a cat or a snake or something like that and feel <laughs> it moving around in there? Well, that's what it felt like. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's a it's a great visual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, it was so incidental. I just lay there for a while and uh, finally said to myself, hey, boy, something wrong. Yeah. You need to say something. Mm -hmm. Then I was trying to figure out, now, what am I going to say without getting her all upset? Oh, oh yeah. Getting, all that. getting yep. into a six foot hover and so forth. <laughs> So they were giving me uh, IVs and doing um, BP counts. It was going down, down, down. Got me down to Brookwood uh, Hospital, couldn't find anything wrong with me. Hmm. Hmm. You probably got a, a, a esophagus condition, so the symptoms are pretty much the same. Oh, well, we got you wired up and uh, so forth. And, uh, it's uh, weather's deteriorating big time. Uh, cold and wet outside, warm and dry inside, good place to spend the night. Right. Yeah. 
my doc finally got there about 11 o'clock the next day. It took him that long to get there because of the road the, condition. The storm, yeah. Anyway, um, he says, based on what has happened to you and your family's history, you need to do a heart cath. Jim, how long is that going to take? A couple of days. Lie. Jim, I have a bug. I'm going home. Check me out. He says, if you look outside, no one's going anywhere in Birmingham, Alabama for the next three days. You picked an ideal time to have this thing done. Mm -hmm. Did the, find a cardiologist uh, on duty uh, that uh, afternoon about five or six o'clock. Uh, gave me the heart cast and said, you have four block 90% and you're right on the verge of a massive one. Hmm. Hmm. All I remember was that nurse slapping me around trying to keep me awake long enough to sign that consent form, got to do the paperwork, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm coming out of anesthesia. Hmm. Yeah. Now, the reason for this rambling story if it hadn't been for that ice down, I'd have come in and Jim Blanton to let me go home and die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness you didn't convince yeah. him. Jim sings in the choir with me now. <laughs> so we were reminiscing about this yesterday. <laughs> and when, when you were recovering, you shared the story about how, you know, you received that message of it's time to get up and go to work. Yes, and... absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, periods of uh, which, what's, introspection are extremely important. Mm -hmm. All right. And the story that uh, Jesus de Soto is telling, it's about nine pages along, depending upon the size of the font or whatnot. But at one time there, he's talking about uh, the 40 days and 40 nights of uh, temptation that Jesus Christ went through. Mm -hmm. He's 30 years old. He's fully man, fully God. Knows he's got a job to do. There's a mission. How am I going to do it? Well, God's a spirit. Satan's a spirit. Mm -hmm. As a human being, Jesus is just 30 years old. Satan's been around a while. Mm -hmm. He's still here. Big time. People don't recognize it, but there, therein lies the problem. Anyway, uh, so Satan's out there with him. The soda doesn't put this in. This is, this is my pitch to it, okay? Mm -hmm. I can just imagine him saying to Jesus Christ, hey boy, we've been out here a while. Aren't you hungry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Won't you change some stones into bread? Uh, you, you can do that. Yeah. Get thee behind me, Satan. Then he takes him out there and says, you see all these nations? They're mine. They bought into what I'm saying, hook, line, and sinker. Now that is in DeSoto's piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They bought into it totally. They're all mine. Well, you just worship me and they're all yours. Hmm. That'll get the job done. Mm -hmm. Ha, ha, ha. Right. That doesn't change the hearts of man, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Get thee behind me. And finally, uh, this is my injection again. Yeah. When temptation is coming to an end, he says to Jesus, uh, hey boy, now look, when you get back downtown, back home, find the highest point in town. All those people down there watching you up there, you just dive off their swan dive, make it look beautiful. You ain't gonna get hurt. Angels gonna rescue you, you know that. That will impress them. That'll get the attention. You win their hearts that way. Ha. Huh. <laughs> no way. Right. No way. Hmm. No, there's gotta be total secession from the way the world thinks. And that's what we're teaching. Right. Yeah. We're teaching secession. 
Well, I just remembered the uh, fact that 30 years ago I was in the hospital here, so uh, just through that April where's work. Well, I think it's uh, it's an important story because it's moments like that. I mean, I personally, I've never spoken to any other person that has gone through the operation that you you vividly uh, share with people, you know, literally having your heart removed from your chest, the heart-lung machine, and, and you have a great analogy about <clears throat> the heart-lung machine and how, you know, most of the world financially is essentially living off of the equivalent of that. Yeah. But to to have that happen be and still be here today and 30 years later, and in those 30 years, what's happened? Well, oh, the, the, this, this was <laughs> published, this came out, you know, you're, you're uninsurable and yet every day more death benefit gets accumulated in your own system of policies like you know it, there's, there's just a whole uh, uh, catalyst of additional yep. things that have taken place over that time frame mm-hmm. yeah. and and for you to kind of share with us um, how introspection came vividly to you because I mean you're yeah. bet you're essentially bedridden in recovery right yeah um, well, well you see the uh, inspiration f- uh, for uh, the concept had begun uh, at least five years before that. Mm-hmm. And I tried to suppress it. Can you expand on that, Nelson? Like well, because uh, this was, how, how, how you explain this sort of stuff to the mindset that prevails out there? Mm-hmm. And I kind of tried to suppress it. Hmm. But uh, when I had that uh, bypass and so forth, uh, it was about like a two or four across the eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, boy, I planted something in your head bone, and uh, it needs to be uh, revealed. Mm-hmm. Uh, get your tail up and go to work. So I have no choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I have to admit that first 10 years was a monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't fun at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was trying to get the message done uh, through uh, uh, seminars with local people and so forth. And you uh, get about uh, 40 people that uh, are good suspects here. And let's say 30 of them, uh, what, what not, is going to be uh, promising they're going to be there. Mm-hmm. All right, 6 o'clock on Thursday night. 4 o'clock, uh, I start calling them all to remind them. Mm-hmm. Every last one of them said they're going to be there. And there were several occasions where no one showed up. How did that make you feel? I'm trying to think of a word. Disheartened is not one of them. It's not strong enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's why are you doing this, boy? I guess that's something like that. Yeah. And so many advisors nowadays have made a, a career out of what you've developed? Well, they were receptive listeners, though. That's the most important right. thing. That's right. the most important thing of all. Smithfield, North Carolina, forestry days. Uh, I'm president of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, that meant that I get to be uh, the one who picks the annual speaker, uh, the speaker for the annual meeting. Mm-hmm. Being an aviator, I picked Bill Piper, Piper Aircraft. Now, that was fun. 76 years old at that time, and uh, yeah, I was 30, uh, something like, about like that. And just to sit and jaw with him like we are now, yeah. oh, what a joy. Well, one of the messages he got to the, across to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, he says, you have a telephone. Big deal. If somebody else doesn't have a telephone, you don't have a thing. (laughs) Truth. He says, now, uh, consider this parallel. What's the way the government goes about building airports? That's the way the people think. All right, they pick one geographical community and put a pin here, and they go out here 50 miles and just draw a circle. Now, how many airplanes is in this circle? Got enough airplanes there, we'll build a regional airport. Mm-hmm. Piper's response was absolutely no. Since if there's two or three people in the community that's interested in aviation, 
get together, go out and buy a little piece of property that's about a uh, half a mile long and about uh, 300 uh, uh, feet wide, uh, maybe four, 500 feet wide. Uh, make it fairly smooth, put a telephone out there. Then now a businessman can fly his private airplane in there and uh, uh, tie it down and get on the phone and call his uh, prospect or client and uh, they've come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> down through the years, we had five different airplanes personally. Mm. And uh, I've never seen a case where you go see a client or a prospect that he wouldn't come out and meet you hmm. and brag that his insurance agent flew in to see me. <laughs> uh, Piper says, um, uh, if the idea catches on there, it will grow of its own accord. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to buy the government at all. So you see the chain of thought process there that and everything has come along. Mm -hmm. so, All right. So, so now let's go. Piper had a uh, a bottom up, you know, yes. a bottom level solution yes. to top down thinking yes. right, right at the beginning. Yeah. See, you're dealing with little airplanes, and the Piper Cub changed the world. If you think uh, of people who will come after us, who will be carrying on your message, what you pioneered, what you developed. Um, what we've been blessed beyond the definition of good fortune with is being able to watch you and you share with us all the time that there's no such thing as having arrived in knowledge. There's always something it's new impossible. to learn. Yeah. And once you've arrived, it's all downhill from there. And for future advisors, for future people, just in the general public who are going to read this book, everything in our mind really begins with the fundamental understanding of the, the fact that you wrote this book for the general public, not for the life licensed advisor. No, mm -hmm. no I was teaching, quote, the book uh, years before the book ever came out. Mm -hmm. I was using overhead projectors and slides and uh, handouts and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, coming from the life insurance background and how life insurance folks think, and particularly in home offices, uh, they want little capsules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, at, uh, back in my equitable days, the uh, uh, big meet was always uh, spring of the year. Mm -hmm. And invariably, uh, I got to be on a panel. I always I be panels. <laughs> well, there's three people in the panel always, and a moderator. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got a maximum of 15 minutes. That's not a lot of time. <laughs> well, by the time you get through with the trivia stuff that goes on, uh, you know, just in those gatherings, uh, you probably got 12 minutes max to try to make a point. Now you go ahead and try to explain infinite banking concepts in 12 minutes, yeah? It's impossible. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, how do you even explain the word infinite? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's uh, been, was my frustration. And so uh, I was trying to get the message done as I saw it uh, over a two and a half hour period of time. It went right over everybody's heads. Hmm. No, uh, no response at all to speak of. Hmm. It was why I might look up on someone that might have an idea what you're talking about, but that's it. Consider that we talked about earlier, Jesus Christ in that 40 days and 40 nights introspection. Right. Mm -hmm. How about how am I going to get this thing done? <laughs> What's the key? Hmm. Well, let's go back further. Here's old Moses. He uh, killed that Egyptian, and so he was banished from uh, Egypt. He had to flee for his life. Mm -hmm. He's out there by himself for 40 years with sheep. Sheep's not very good company. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't carry on a good conversation at all. Bye. <laughs> that, gives, that, gives, that gives you time for introspection. <laughs> and he considers 
that here's uh, all that superior education I get was absolutely wrong. Hmm. That was the burning bush as I see it. Hmm. It would not go away. Hmm. You got to go back and get those guys out. Now, while we own that before I forget it, these things that human beings do to try to impress one another, mm -hmm. you know, the top down thinking and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so Moses is trying to get Pharaoh to let him go. And so he'd do some sort of trick and his false prophets would match it every time. Got down there to the last one of the uh, firstborn. That did the trick because they couldn't match that. <laughs> See, that's the thing of uh, trying to do things the world, the way the world tries to get it done. Mm -hmm. People are looking at this thing of what goes on with life insurance to entirely backward. Right. Mm -hmm. That I could see easily your need for finance is way bigger than your need for uh, uh, death benefit. It was grossly misclassified. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And when you classify things correctly, behavior changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it should never have been called life insurance because that is not the major characteristic. It's obvious. You got to have a lot more of that in order to produce the death benefit. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But the magnitude of it uh, had never been examined. And as a result of it, uh, you see, uh, unfortunately, the life insurance company is bought into the way the world thinks totally. When you, I uh, was reading the book on the way here and, and I, I captured that part about how behavior changes when you classify things properly. Yeah. And uh, I, I've read it in there before, but it resonated with me for some reason hmm. uh, here yesterday. It jumped out. It jumped out at me. Yeah. And I was considering how, you know, you say in the book that really had you been in charge of naming it, you know, you would have called it a personal monetary system. You yeah, know, with, with, the, with the death benefit thrown in on the side just aside. for the heck of it. Right. <laughs> which, <laughs> just which, just which, for good measure. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> might, might not fit on the marketing material, but an acronym or something could, yeah, could work. Much more accurate. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm, so I was thinking back and I was in, in introspection because I was on the airplane. And so that's when I could yeah. get some good uh -huh. introspection done. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, what if? Uh, the insurance industry had called it a personal monetary system, we wouldn't be in a position today where we would be battling against, you know, the the, the stigma mm -hmm. that the industry has created because people say yeah. the words insurance yeah. and, and there's many forms. There's insurance in all these sure. forms. Sometimes people have had a bad experience with maybe auto insurance sure. or crop insurance or, or some other aspect. And so they lump it all together as an industry, as a category. Yeah. And they can, there can be this, um, you know, there's, there's some resistance mm -hmm. to the word itself of sure. insurance. So had it been called a personal monetary system, there wouldn't, we wouldn't have yeah. this, you know, because the behavior. Yeah, but it was the, derived it, from it. And so that's uh, the, the, the problem. See, uh, something else comes to mind here back uh, 10 years ago, AIG, mm -hmm. uh, everybody uh, associated that kind of thing with uh, life insurance and there's no correlation at all. That's right. No, that's the, right. The, the, the part of AIG's life insurance had nothing to do with it at all. And that was one of the primary reasons for its survival. Sure. Was the strength of the yeah. book, sure. that, that block of the life business. Of yeah, insurance absolutely. Business. Yeah. yeah, no no question about it. But hmm. uh, the, the problem out there again is right back to how people think and uh, the fact that there is not all that introspection. One more example, and uh, we'll get off that subject, okay? <laughs> uh, we've got to go back to the Bible again. Uh, you know the story of uh, old uh, Paul, used to be Saul, uh, persecuting uh, the Christians and uh, so forth. Uh, uh, the Pharisee of the Pharisees. Yeah. Wasn't nobody higher than him. Mm -hmm. He studied under Gamaliel. He had a PhD under Gamaliel. <laughs> On the road to Damascus, he got the living daylight slapped out of him there and whatnot. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it took him 10 years of introspection to get his head screwed on right. Consider what's going on out there in the minds of people about the banking business. And as we, as we 
know that it's just it's in the hands of the wrong people. Right. Mm -hmm. It can be done at that you and me level totally. Which is where it should be held. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. But they don't see this. Now, how are you going to get this across hmm. in 30 minutes, in 40 hours, in 40 days? It won't be done. It's got to evolve a little bit at a time. And they've got to be receptive to it. Mm -hmm. And introspective. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes, right. they've got to go through, they've got to get inspired, they've got to go through the period of introspection and get their head screwed on right. It's just like oh, oh, how brilliant old uh, Rosenberg's piece is, that intellectually people, they know that something wrong, uh, but they don't have the emotional courage to do anything about it. Guys, one more example like here, I'll give you an idea of the scope of this, all right? Okay. Forestry days again, Eastern North Carolina. I'm working with private landowners uh, and uh, teaching them about uh, preparing land, uh, cut over timberland and such that had been neglected and so forth, clearing it with uh, heavy equipment, mm -hmm. caterpillar tractors and direct seeding instead of transplants. Which is pioneering something almost yeah. new. Yeah. To yeah, totally. The guy wouldn't have anything to do with it. Well, some time passed, maybe a year or so. He's in the hospital, three weeks. Huh. Introspection. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking about this. The guy's right. Calls me. Uh, I had this experience here in the hospital and so forth, thought this thing through. You're right. Let's do it. All right. We get together. We make plans over a couple of weeks of time and so forth about how to go about it and when to start and so forth. We're ready to push the go button. He says, I can't do it. Why is that? What will my neighbors think? Oh, boy. <laughs> this is not the way everybody does things. Mm -hmm. You know what that makes me think about, Nelson, is when you you repeatedly say that this must be caught. Yes. It can't be taught. Absolutely. And so what you've shared with us today about being introspective. Yeah. So people get exposed to the message, mm -hmm. whether it's through a course of study, yeah. re reading the book, speaking to somebody who's already implemented this process in their life, and they go through a period of introspection. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if they catch it, yeah. the phone rings. That's right. I'm ready to go. I'm yeah. ready to, right. to do this. 